Okay, so this is a quick trick to help you remember all of your oxy anions, the number of oxygens in them, and the charge. Uh, just know that these are all of the eight anions, so uh, those ending in ATE, so the maximum number of oxygens are present in these. And if you know this set, you can figure out the others. So what you want to do is look at the right-hand side of the metalloid staircase. Um, so there's, there's our metalloid staircase, and all of the polyatomic anions that we're going to be talking about um, are formed from elements to the right of that. You have three shapes here. To keep in mind, you've got a T, a 4, and a 3. And so this is the T43 shortcut. You'll notice that boron, carbon, nitrogen, and silicon, all part of that T, are all going to, um, they're all going to form polyatomic anions with three oxygens. Three oxygens. So I'm going to label them all with three oxygens. Um, the four, those that are within the four, uh, all have four oxygens in their eight anions. So I'll label those. And then the chlorine, bromine, and iodine, as you might suspect, contain three. And so we've found a pattern. And it's just a nice, easy way to remember the oxygen content. Now for the charge, what you want to do is notice a trend starting with 3 minus, going to 2 minus, and then 1 minus. And within one group here, we've got the same charge. So these polyatomic anions are borate, carbonate, nitrate, and silicate. Starting with the phosphorus, we start a new trend. So we've got a 3 minus, and then in the next group over, these are all 2 minus, and the next group over, 1 minus. So that our polyatomic anions over here are phosphate, sulfate, and those were really the only two out of the that region containing the four um, that we talk about in class routinely. And then with the chlorine, bromine, and iodine, you've got chlorate, bromate, and iodate. So again, it's just a nice trick uh, to remember the oxygen content and charge on your polyatomic oxy anions.